Hi, I'm Daniel Tibble. I'm the head of data at Weijo. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about how we're using the power of Databricks to make petabyte scale data consumable to um, all of our customers. So at Weijo, we take data from um, connected car vehicles, so vehicles that are connected to the internet. Um, at the moment in the US, we've got over 15 million vehicles and we're streaming that data in near real time. So we take the data from the vehicle into our engine and make it consumable for um, our partners in quite often less than 40 to 60 seconds. Um, and it's huge amounts of data, you know, 18 billion data points a day, um, 900,000 per, per second data points. Now this is, this is more data than, you know, visa processing. Um, this is more data than, you know, most people are used to dealing with. And we've got over five petabytes and that's probably actually closer to six right now because it's growing all the time. So, you know, it's a really huge amount of data that we're dealing with at, the, uh, at Weijo. So at Weijo, we're making um, all of that data available to a, a large number of consumers. So we work in the traffic management space, we work in the retail space, we work in insights across all different sectors. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking that data, we're making it consumable for a, a number of different product types. So we've got a live stream, so we can stream all of those billions of data points or, you know, a subsection of for uh, specific use cases that might be looking at real-time parking or real-time traffic management. We can transfer the large data in batch um, via, you know, technologies you're familiar with, such as S3. Um, we, we're making more and more intelligence-based products, which are customizable reports that aggregate the large amounts of data around specific use cases um, and insights. And what I'm going to talk to you about um, today largely is a new offering we've got, which is Mobility Intelligence Studio. Now, this is a self-serve data science platform that we're leveraging Databricks for, which is it's making all of our data available to um, a whole different type of consumer who don't necessarily have the infrastructure or the capabilities to process that amount of raw data. Um, and this is really what I'm going to talk about today. And also, we've got some developer labs uh, offering, which is uh, APIs, which you know, you'll have seen some of the things out there in the market that you can subscribe to and you can call and integrate with your own applications. Just going to talk a bit about the relationship with Weijo and Databricks. Now, we've been using Databricks for around 18 months now. It's our primary analytical uh, work, um, our primary analytical platform. And our data scientists, data engineers, and data analysts um, do 70, 80% of the work in Databricks. Now, as I mentioned before, a large reason for that is because of the size of the data we're dealing with. When we were looking at um, other platforms, just the, the capabilities just weren't there to be able to not just deal with the data, but give us the fully functioning data science environment that we can get out of Databricks. We've recently been um, extending Delta Lake within our environment just to, you know, take advantage of the um, ability to, you know, optimize um, not just against your partitions, but, um, you know, re-indexing and some of the data lineage tracking that you get in there is able to help us in the CCPA and GDPR work um, areas. Recently, though, Databricks introduced the white label functionality in their E2 offering. Um, and this is something that we've been exploring in a number of different uh, ways, which is um, first of all, allowing a sample preview, but also it's a way for us to deliver intelligence and insight to our customers. And further, we're gonna look at offering platform as a service because we've got so much unique capabilities now around dealing with connected vehicle data that we can, you know, we're working with some um, quite large, um, uh, vehicle manufacturers to take advantage of that and um, allow them to kind of develop their own platform using Databricks and the Weijo intelligence. So as I said before, we've got a huge amount of data and it's what makes Weijo unique. You know, we've got the largest connected vehicle data set of its kind anywhere in the world, but it's also our largest challenge because we want to make that data available to solve use cases outside of businesses that would traditionally have big data environments and be able to process, you know, petabyte scale data. So we want to open up to more users, but we also want to reduce the technical barrier to entry. You know, we've got a lot of insight that could be very consumable now. Um, and the investment of um, being able to take this amount of data, you know, it's quite long and it's got long lead times. 
we've also got challenges around data privacy. You know, you guys in the U- US are a little bit further behind in terms of privacy, but in the UK, we've been dealing with GDPR for quite a while now. And what we want to be able to do is make sure that people can consume the insights and get the value out of WeGeo data, but also be able to control the data within our own environment. So I'm going to talk about two use cases which um, speak to that. Now, the first one is um, quite a simple one. So it's a way of being able to use the white label functionality as a preview environment so that people can understand how good and you know the high quality and the high coverage of WeGeo data quite early on in the sales cycle. And then the second one is um, much more about a um, much more about a platform. So being able to kind of sub- give a subscription to customers so they can interact and consume the WeGeo data as the need to for their specific use cases. So use case one is around evaluating WeGeo data now. Um, you know we've got some quite um, big customers who are really really want to get their hands on our data. But actually, what that means is it's quite a lengthy pre-sales um, cycle. So previously, what people had to do is we had to enter into a legally binding um, agreement so we could transfer the large amounts of data we've got to the to the customer. Um, and that was, you know, just so that they could even get a sense of the high quality it was outside of what we were able to show them in our in our sales collateral. So, you know, it's quite a long process, and it meant we actually let let the data lose our leave our environment, which you know we don't really want to be doing. Um, it's something you know, obviously, we want to control um, the data as much as possible. So, what we moved to was we introduced a concept called data labs, and. What this does is it, it, it allows the um, potential customers to enter into a very limited agreement where they can um, use the white label environment to query a sample of our data. So a very small sample, so a week um, of the data. And because we can use the full power of the Databricks environment, they can do any querying, any data quality assessment they want, um, and they can really get an understanding of the, the specifics of WeGeo data for their specific use cases, because it's very difficult sometimes. Each customer's got a different use case to kind of, you know, understand it. And it was taking up a lot of my team's time, particularly in data science and data analytics, to start pulling together specific use cases for every customer. So what we've been able to do with a white label environment is get the get the data into the hands of the customer. The architecture is pretty simple. So we. We've got our core adept platform, which is WeJo's own adept platform, and that's where we keep the majority of our data. We very simply, we just make a copy of the data into an S3 location. Um, it's a one-off sample, it's static, it doesn't update. Um, and then we just use um, a very simple white label uh, cluster access model so that each egress partner can go into the environment, run their own queries within a notebook. We've pre-compiled some notebooks for them. Um, but they can run them on the queries. Their data scientists and data analysts can really get their hands on the data and evaluate and see actually the quality of the data without feeling there's a barrier in between. And as I said before, the real beauty of this is no data leaves the WeGeo environment. So there's no upfront investment from the um, egress partner. And it means that we've got full control over our data. So this is an example of um, our sample preview white label environment. As you can see, it's a fairly familiar Databricks landing screen. There is some customization available in there. Um, but what's great about it is it's, it's fully federated for each individual um, customer. So they can only you know, work within their own environment that they, they can't see other people's work and they can only see the data that we make available. But even on top of that, you've got your own customer management policies and you've got your own user config within there. There's, it's quite, a, quite a, a great way to kind of um, manage this sort of environment. Um, and I'll just show you an example of a notebook. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, we've, we've pre-written a lot of these notebooks, but we do let people write their own code and create their own notebooks and share them exactly as if it was their own Databricks environment. So what we've done here, if I just switch to um, a bit of a dashboard view, just so you can get a sense for some of the um, visuals that we, we create for them. Now, I'll just point out this is synthetic data, so it's not really our data. It's just a, a, a synthetic version of it, so there's no um, no private or personal data going to um, be shown here. Um, and yeah, so you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly standard dashboard. You'll be familiar with, with a lot of these, and we've just pre-compiled some of these just to get people uh, interested. One of the big things that people are interested in is where's the coverage of our data. So we're, you know, just by creating a few simple images like this, we can start showing 
you know, where all of our data is across the US. I and mean, as you can see, it fairly broadly follows population there. Um, we've put a couple of images in there, just certain visuals, just so they can uh, understand what they can do with the data in terms of the Databricks environment, because a lot of our data is geospatial in nature, as you would expect from connected vehicles. Um, it's really, you know, mapping um, type visuals that people want to look at. Um, and there you can see just a, a, a bit of a um, heat map of um, so a very small sample of our data across the US. But it'll go down to individual data points. So, you know, here with um, some individual data points across the streets of uh, Manhattan, um, just so people can get a gain a feel for the coverage of there. This is all synthetic, as I mentioned before. Um, but really, you know, what, what people actually use this for is they very quickly move out of our pre-compiled notebooks and just really get stuck in. You know, I'm sure as everyone on this, um, everyone who's watching this, the first thing they want to do when they see a data set is go in and run their own queries. And we encourage that. You know, it's really what this environment's about. It means that people can build their own queries, um, be it in Spark, be it in Scala, be it in SQL. Um, and the data scientists can, you know, understand it in the specifics of their use case. You know, because people want to use it for different things. We might have some people who want to use it for parking purposes. People who want to look at traffic flows. Um, people might want to do origin destination studies. Um, and people might be interested in the latency and the capture rate. And that's all available for them using, you know, for fairly simple SQL um, and Spark queries. So the other case, use case that we're looking at with uh, Datafix White Label, and this is this is quite new to us, but it's very exciting. We've had a, a lot of interest in this, is using it in what we've branded Mobility Intelligence Studio. Now, this is really about gaining access to Weijo intelligence products. So it's all of the intelligence and the insight that our data science and data analytics teams have built up. Um, you know, we really are the experts at dealing with connected vehicle data, and we can start adding insight and using our own unique IP to build reports and insight um, and again, it reduces the need for big investment in um, big data platforms and data science capabilities. The architecture is very similar. Um, there's not, not a huge departure. You know, we, we, we separate it from our, what we call our core adept, um, but we've actually moved the aggregated data into a um, Delta Lakes to give us a bit more control over the um, you know, the, the tables that people can access and the views that people can access, but also it allows us to optimize for aggregated data rather than just looking at the, the raw data. But other than that, it's a very simple, it's a very similar model. So, you know, the clusters um, are, are unique to each instance and each authorized user can only look at their specific white label environment. Um, so similar to the, to the uh, previous use case, it gives us a lot of control over, you know, what people can see um, and do within that environment. So this is an example of our Mobility Intelligence Studio. So this is Traffic Intelligence, um, the Weijo product, which takes um, the, the connected vehicle data at road level and aggregates it and summarizes it so that um, people can understand what's happening on their individual road networks. And this is a fairly simple um, analysis of a specific um, toll road in Pennsylvania. And it was over COVID, but it was also while they had a lane closure there. So they wanted to understand the impact of the lane closure um, on the on the um, journeys on that specific road network. And as you can see, you know, it's, it's fairly simple insight. And it, it was really great because we could take, you know, the, the petabytes worth of data that we've got in Weijo and just very simply summarize it and make it accessible for people in charts and graphs that are hover over and drill down and they can, you know, go into this and they can write their own queries and they can further interrogate the data um, as and when needed. Um, but what we're also doing with this, and I'm just gonna to switch to a different notebook here is, you know, we've, we've got a lot of people who, um, you know, engineering firms particularly, who just want to really understand what's happening on a specific road network. And that's the big use case we're finding for Mobility Intelligence Studio. So we've been working with a couple of um, large engineering firms to really um, drill down into those specific use cases. And this is a really common one. So what they're interested in is, you know, a very, very limited area um, and some very high level and detailed stats on the area. So, um, you know, this is very simply here, you put in a couple of dates, you put in a polygon, which you can generate quite simply and r run the notebook and you can generate all of this insight. And this means that business managers who don't necessarily know SQL or Spark or Scala can start getting the insight that they need. So just by putting in that polygon, they're able to, you know, see where the, see where the vehicles are across the road network. 
we can um, you know zoom in. We've got counts by 15 minute intervals. Now the sort of things that people use this for is it's really for bid support. So they might have um, you know a bid coming up on an interstate in you know Arkansas or anywhere in the US, and they want to get an understanding of how busy it is, which roads are used, what times of day it's there, and that's actually quite expensive to do. Um, without this sort of data because you've got to send people and install special equipment. Um, but really here you can very quickly start getting counts of, of the individual road network um, using the WeGeo data and you can extrapolate that up to get a, a really good sense of when it's busy and which roads are being used. And, you know, if, if anyone here has uh, ever been to the Golden Gate, some of these numbers might be familiar to them. Um, then we've got some origin destination images. So this is, you know, again, it's a simple heat map. It's all... Um, it's all um, anonymized, so it doesn't go to um, specifics. So you can't get any personal information out of here. But you can get a really good sense of, you know, how the specific road network's being used. So this is people who went over the Golden Gate Bridge over four days. And there you can see where, you know, how far we've got people coming from Reno, coming from North Carolina. I don't know if we've um, quite gone out of state there. And you can go down to the real specifics. So this is actually within that same polygon where people parked. So, you know, we've got a cluster of parking here that looks like a viewpoint there. Um, so we had, you know, almost uh, over 200 vehicles park on that viewpoint over that time. Um, and then we can do that by time of day and do the breakdown. And this is really valuable for, um, you know, these, these companies to be able to get this data um, in their hands without having to know Spark, SQL or anything like that. And the real big advantage of this for us is that none of this touches raw data. So you know, we've hidden all of the code and we've kind of put a barrier between the raw, any any data that might be uh, private or personally identifiable or could be reverse engineered. It's just not exposed in this, you know, the Databricks environment builds the aggregates for them. It makes the aggregate tables available for query, but all of the raw data is behind, um, behind that barrier. So in summary, you know, we've been using Databricks as our primary data science and data analytics platforms for 18 months, two years now. And it's where we built up a huge amount of IP value and insight around the connected vehicle data set that we've got. With a new white label and E2 functionality, it allowed us to open up that data and insight um, to our partners. And it's meant that they haven't had to invest in um, huge amounts of big data processing, but also that it means they don't necessarily need huge amounts of data science, data engineering capabilities to engage with WeGeo data. Um, and it's really reduced the barrier to entry. And what that's meant is we've opened up a huge amount of uh, market and use cases who wouldn't have previously been able to consume WeGeo data and WeGeo insight. So I'm just going to open up to any questions, thoughts, or comments from the from the audience now.